Our Heavenly Father, thank you once again for giving us an opportunity to study your word. As we continue looking at these messages that uh, are to ripen the church and the earth for a harvest, we pray that uh, the gospel may become a personality in our lives. We may be changed by the things we read, by the impartation of the Holy Spirit and the ministration of the angels. And so be with us, Lord, I pray. Clean thou our souls, clean thou our ears and eyes, that uh, what we behold and hear may be that which will bring praise and honor unto thy name. And so guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. And so uh, I'm, I'm glad that uh, God has given us another opportunity to study his word and be educated in the thing that uh, he will want us to hear at such a time as this. We are told that uh, there are many truths contained in the word of God, but uh, what the flock needs is the present truth. The present truth to be able to discern the times that we are living in and what God will want of us and us to do. And so the this aspect of uh, uh, fear God, uh, when we talk about fear God, this is uh, what uh, we find in the Bible then. In Revelation chapter 14 verse 6, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. In the book of Mark chapter 16 verse 15, we are told that, uh, And he said unto them, Go ye into the whole world, and preach the gospel to every creature. And in Matthew chapter 24 verse 14, we find that, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When we were looking yesterday at uh, the issue of uh, the everlasting gospel, we found that it is uh, the life of Jesus Christ, his power of resurrection, and a living in holiness, according to Romans chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. And then we are told that uh, it is the power of God unto salvation and Paul says that he's not ashamed of uh, this gospel because it reproduces the personality of Jesus Christ in them that um, do believe on his name. And so this gospel, we saw that it has to go to the whole world and then the end has to come. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 7, in the topic that uh, right now we are looking at, we are told the angel was saying with a loud voice fear god and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountain of waters this is what we are told we are to fear god but uh, this message has to go out with a loud voice it has to be proclaimed with a loud voice. In First John chapter four verse eighteen, we are told that uh, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. And so, when we are talking about fear God, there is no fear in love. We are not talking about something that will bring us to a state that we look at. Uh, fearing God in the aspect that uh, he is going to punish us. But we have to look at the path, the, 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 uh, uh, the reasoning that to fear God is to be perfected in his love rather than fearing of the torment. First, each inhabitant of the earth is called to fear God. Uh, this word fear, it's a noun, an emotion experienced in anticipation of some specific pain or danger usually accompanied by a desire to flee or fight. An, an anxious feeling, they 
hushed it up out of fear of public reaction, a feeling of profound respect for someone or something, the fear of God. And so when you are talking about the fear of God in the book of uh, Revelation uh, chapter 14, we are not looking at the first two description of fearing God. We are looking at the third uh, aspect, which actually we find that uh, it is a feeling of profound respect for someone or something. This fear is not of the kind described in the second verse and it's synonymous with anguish, distress and dread. The fear is rather the expression of deep respect toward our, uh, our God. And so when, when we talk about uh, uh, fearing God, it is uh, uh, about respecting him, standing in love with him rather than uh, thinking that God is there always. He wants to punish us of the things that uh, 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 we are doing which are, are wrong. Perfect love casts out a uh, uh, fear. That is what we are told. And only fear the Lord and serve him is in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he hath done for you. When, when we think about the things that uh, 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 the, the Father has done for us, when uh, we think about uh, Him only having one Son, but giving Him for our salvation, we actually approach Him with reverence, we actually approach Him with respect. This is the fear that we are talking about, and not the fear of being tormented. And so, uh, uh, we find uh, the kind of fear that uh, the man Job had. Let us read the book of Job, chapter 1, verses 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed, shunned evil. And so we find that uh, the fear of the Lord is the eschewing of evil. That uh, we will not delight in doing of those things that uh, will not please the Lord, considering what he has given for our ransom. No man could ransom another man, but God gave his only uh, begotten son so that we may be redeemed from uh, our sins. Let us look at uh, the fear of God that we are being told in other parts of the scriptures. We are told that uh, therefore, we are told that therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him, Deuteronomy 8.6. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and you shall serve him and hold fast to him. Deuteronomy 13, 4. They have not been humbled to this day nor have they feared. They have not walked in my law or in my statutes that I set before you. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man that you may fear the Lord you are God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, you and your son and your grandson, all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. And so when we are talking about uh, uh, the, the fear of the Lord, it is accompanied by uh, uh, being in awe and reverence of his holy word and not fearing him for any punishment that uh, uh, he will inflict on us. And so, uh, and the commandments of the Lord are not grievous. The commandments of the Lord are not burdensome. And so, in this fear, in this love that we have for God, we will find ourselves in harmony with his word. Look at uh, what uh, we are told uh, here. What does it mean to fear God? 
1 John 4 18 there is no fear in love but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love 1 Samuel 12 24 only fear the Lord and serve him to fear the Lord is to serve him in truth with all your heart or a heart for consider how great things he hath done for you and so this is what I was saying the fear of the Lord is to serve him in truth with all our hearts considering that he gave his only begotten son for our salvation in job 1 1 we have seen that there is the man that is skewed evil another way of looking at fearing the lord is excusing evil and doing that which is righteous by the power of the indwelling christ by the power of the indwelling christ we are told the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge praise the lord and so the fear of the lord is not the running away from the lord but it is just the beginning of knowing the father and the son so as we fear him as we grow in serving him in truth with all our heart the secret of the lord is with them that fear him then his secrets are revealed unto us this is the three angels messages and this is how we have to proclaim them in uh, to the whole world the eye of the lord is on them that fear him how is the eye of the lord on them that fear him to protect them he sends his angels to deliver them from all the troubles of their life and uh, this is found in psalms 34 verse 7 his eyes are upon us and we find that the angel of the lord comes around those who fear him who love him who serves him there is no one to those who fear the lord meaning that in the fear of the lord everything is provided and this is righteousness by faith in verity justification by faith the third angel's message believing that the word of the lord will do what it has promised it will do even in the time of trouble that we shall not want his salvation is near to those who fear him and we we saw yesterday that um, uh, the gospel is the power of god unto the salvation and we see that those who fear the lord the salvation of god is near to them we find that in this fear also we find something so great in this fear we find that great is his mercy to those who fear him amen so god shows mercy to those who fear him he will bless those who fear him he will fulfill the desires of those who fear him psalms 145 verses 19 and so instead of looking at the first angel's message fear god and give him glory in a very negative way that we have to look at god at somebody who is ready to punish us we should be looking at the first angel's message as a call of love and uh, we saw in christ object lesson page 415 paragraph 5 it is not uh, uh, um, bad to remind us of uh, uh, these things about uh, the fear of the lord which is the perfect love being reproduced in us and then us sounding the last message which we find in uh, uh, christ object lesson page uh, 415 paragraph 5 let us look at the last message we are looking at uh, fear god and so uh, as i'm saying let us look at this fear god as perfection of love in our hearts and then when the love is perfected for those who fear love is not perfected in them the fear in the sense of negativity but the fear in the side of being positive is growing in love and having a knowledge of the father and the son and then love perfect love is reproduced in our life when perfect love is reproduced in our life then we can sound the last message and we were told this about the last message those who wait for the bridegroom's coming are to say to the people behold you are god the last race of merciful light the last message of mercy to be given to the world is a revelation of his character of love and remember that 
fear God is being perfected in love. And so after we have been perfected in love, then we can be able to go to reveal his character of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The children of God are to manifest his glory in their own life and character. They are to reveal that what the grace of God has done for them. The light of the son of righteousness is to shine forth in good works, in words of truth and deeds of holiness. And uh, uh, how is character, uh, how is character completed in our lives how is character how, how does character uh finds it is completion uh we find this christ object lesson page 384 paragraph 2 love is the basis of godliness and you see the fear of fear the lord give him glory for the hour of his judgment why has the hour of his judgment come? Not that the saints may be judged, but the saints may receive the reward. Only the sinners are judged in a sense per se because they have not uh, uh, adhered to the word of God. But the saints are perfected in love. And then the most holy experience is the experience of godliness, perfection, glory completeness of christian perfection and this godliness and uh, character perfection we are told that love is the basis of godliness whatever the profession no man has pure love to god unless he has unselfish love for his brother but we can never come into possession of this spirit by trying to love others what is needed is the love of christ in the heart when self is merged in christ love springs forth spontaneously the completeness of Christian character is attained when the impulse to help and bless others springs constantly from within, when the sun of when the sunshine of heaven fills the heart and is revealed in the countenance. And so, after being perfected in love, after being made whole in love, then we can go forth with the third angel's message to reveal what this love has done in our life. So fear God and give him glory is to show forth the world the character of love that god has loved us and given us his uh, son and so the lord will fulfill the desires of the hearts of those who fear him him psalms 147 verse 11 psalms 147 verses 11 the lord uh the lord the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, 147 of Psalms 11. It will be well with those who fear God. Amen. That those who love the Lord at the end of the time, and they have denied self, and they have died to selfishness, tell them, tell the righteous it shall be well with them. Because they have chosen to love God than have the love of the things of the world and so this is great a book of remember is written for those who fear his name and so we are seeing the aspect of the uh, uh, of the of the first angel's message fear god and give him glory in another way that it is being perfected in love it is have the protection of the angels it is having the salvation of God. And then at the end of the day, a book of remembrance is written uh, uh, for them. A book of remembrance. The son of righteousness will arise on those who fear him. Praise the Lord. If only we can preach the third, the, the first angel's messages and combine it with the second angel and the third angel's message, which is justification by faith, then the world will be drawn to god but uh, we have been in this habit of uh, uh, preaching a message which does not reveal the love of god but rather instills fear in the hearts of the people 
uh, uh, and instead of being Christians because they have found a love of God in their heart, they come or they profess Christianity because they fear of the torment uh, that the wicked uh, will receive. And so if we can only come to God because we fear of the torment, then our love will not be perfected according to First John chapter 4, verses uh, 8. And so God asks us to fear him by putting all his commandments into practice because he knows that this is the only way uh, leading to uh, happiness. We, we have tried every other thing, but uh, it has never worked. We have tried to be servants of Satan, but this has never given us any joy in our lives. It has never given us peace. But the fear of the Lord brings this joy, it brings this peace, and it brings this salvation. Uh, looking at the book of Revelation chapter 19 verse 5, and 19 verse 5, give him glory. And a voice came out of the throne saying, praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. You, you realize uh, uh, something here, that uh, those who fear the Lord, they praise the Lord. They do not go about mourning about what they have denied themselves. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both uh, great, uh, small and great. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. So uh, those who fear the Lord actually will uh, be able to praise him, be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. So the fearing of the Lord is accompanied by giving him glory. The fearing of the Lord does not come by uh, walking in a way that um, seems that uh, we have been forced to, uh, uh, to do things that we don't want. But uh, when we fear the Lord, we shall praise him and it will accompany by giving him glory and it will be accompanied by praising him. And so look at the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 13. Suddenly, suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace good will toward men luke chapter 2 verse 13 and so the saints who fear the lord praise him and give him glory now if you fear god in a negative way there, there is no way you will strive to live a holy life of giving glory to god a life of praising him the the christian your christian life will be a dry a, a, a demonstration of a, a fearing of, of God. And so, when also we fear God, in Hebrews chapter 13, we are told this in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifices of praise to God, continually that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name and so the people who fear the lord will offer sacrifices of prayer and talking about uh, uh giving uh sacrifices of praise the book of romans chapter 12 verses 1 uh, to 3 romans chapter 12 verses 1 to 3 uh we are told this in the in the Bible, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, 
holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but ye be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man this among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure uh, of faith. And so this aspect of fearing God and giving him glory is uh, uh, offering our lives as a living sacrifice, giving sacrifices of praises unto him. And uh, Revelation chapter 4, verses 11, here is the angels who fear God, what they did. They praise him, and they praise him. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist, and were created, Revelation 4, 11. So we shall not be seeking our own glory. We shall not be seeking to lift ourselves high, but we shall decrease as he increased. The aspect of fearing God and giving him glory is letting Christ increase in our lives to take eminence rather than uh, exalt self and think of ourselves more important than what we ought to be. In fact, uh, if we think ourselves to be something, or if we think anything to be something in this world, it is only idols. The Lord made the heavens and the earth. And the other things that we espouse so much in our lives, they are just idols. And so uh, the God who made the earth and the heaven, and the one that established the world by his wisdom and stretches the heavens, at his discretion, according to Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 10 to 12, is the one to receive the glory, is the one to be feared and not human beings. And so God created everything so that uh, 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 it may be a pleasure for him to receive honor and man to enjoy what God has created. And so we read in Revelation chapter 7, verse 12, uh, because we are told that uh, fear God and give him glory for the hour of the judgment is come and worship him who made the earth, the heavens, and everything that is therein. And so in Revelation chapter four, 7, verse 12, is, we find that thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And so... Uh, the Lord who created all these things is the one that should receive thanks, that should receive glory. Human glory is nothingness. The one who says he understands something is nothing. Only in Christ is our wisdom, our love made perfect. But without him, we can actually do nothing. So fear God and give him glory why he made the earth and the heavens and then now think about this uh when the sacrifices were offered in the most holy place during the day of atonement to show that the sacrifices had been accepted the shakina glory filled the temple of god and this Shekinah glory was a symbolic and emblematic way uh, in the life of a Christian that when he offers himself as a living sacrifice and he gives his life to God, then the glory of God will fill his heart. In fact, Christ in John chapter 17 says, Father, glorify me with the glory the first glory we had with you the the glory we had with you from the beginning and then he says that this glorification was the giving back of uh, 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 his holy spirit of being omnipresence everywhere and then 
he was given the Holy Spirit, the Father shed forth the Holy Spirit, and through the Son it was given on the day of Pentecost, and it came with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so, the just as the same way the glory of the Shekinah glory of the Lord filled the temple, when we offer our bodies as living sacrifices, then we come, become the temple of God. He finds an abode in us and his glory fills us. We are told what uh, uh, what knowing not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God and you are not your own. And so we were purchased at a price. And so let us give glory to God. Let us fear him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 20. 1 Corinthians 6, uh, 20. This is what we find. For you are bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians 6, 20. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. Now, this aspect of uh, whether you eat or drink do it for the glory of god some people have a problem with this but uh, think about this on the day of atonement uh there were special sacrifices that were made there were special foods that were taken there were special drinks that were taken and so in the day of atonement everything did not just happen as any other normal days remember we are the temple of god and we are in the day of atonement remember the day of atonement and the work of the high priest and how his mind his body and the sacrifices were to be offered so as they may be accepted in the most holy place and so in this day of atonement we cannot just come before the Lord. Remember, we are the temple. And then the sacrifices have to make that, to make us be accepted. Or uh, to, uh, how can I put this? We are the temple. There was the wilderness temple. And then we offer our bodies as living sacrifices. And so, whatever that had to go in the temple didn't have to have any defilement. And so, if it had any defilement, then it were rejected on the Day of Atonement. And so, what we partake of as we present our bodies as living sacrifices can make the sacrifices be accepted or the sacrifices be rejected for there is no imperfect sacrifice that will be accepted before God. And so, on the Day of Atonement and even on the other day, the high priest did not come before the Lord on their own prescription prescription or uh, of their own prescription they did not um, circumvent a way or plan a way of appearing before the lord they were to appear there as they were told by god himself and so in this day of atonement as we are the temple and we are offering ourselves as living sacrifices we must come as the lord has said that we should come and somebody may say, this is righteousness by works. No, this is not righteousness by works. Remember, the guy who came to a wedding, he was invited by Christ himself. And he was given a wedding garment, but he decided to come in his own garment. Think about that. This is now what is called righteousness, our own righteousness. We cannot come before God with our own righteousness. We cannot do our own things and be accepted before the Lord. We should come on his own terms, not on our own terms. And so Christ is the one that offered the garment, which is his character. And he is the one who is telling us that this body has to be kept in such and such a way. This is the only thing I accept, not what you will manufacture will I accept, but what I have only said that you should do, that is what I'll accept. And so giving him glory and uh, being watchful in what we take 
in it is so important because we are coming by the terms of Jesus Christ, not on our terms. If we can come to Christ by our own terms, then why did he even die? He has to accept us on our own terms and not on his term. Uh, remember, Moses was told, and uh, let me just go there very fast. Exodus. Brothers and sisters, this is fear God and give him glory. Number three in the presentation of Revelation chapter 14, the three angels' messages. Uh, Exodus chapter 25, verses 8 and 9. 8 and 9. Nine. Let us see what the Lord is talking about in building of uh, in building of this sanctuary. Uh, then, Exodus twenty five eight and nine. And let them make me a sanctuary, this temple, that I may dwell among you. Your body is the temple of God, and the Holy Spirit of God dwells there. So make me a sanctuary. Bring in your body. Bring your body as a living sacrifice to be my temple. Now verse 9, according to all that I'll show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instrument thereof, even so shall you make it. Now, uh, we are the temple of God. We are like in the brackets, that sanctuary. And everything that makes up this temple or this tabernacle has to be built according to the pattern, according to all the things he has shown unto us. We are not to build this temple according to the way we think about it. We are to build it according to the way the Lord has told us to build it. Because, uh, uh, think about this, what Peter says about building this temple, which is our body. The book of First Peter. Uh, first Peter and uh, uh, verses 5. First Peter chapter 2 verses 5. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And so the temple in the wilderness was built by the tents Solomon's temple was built by stones that were made in the quarry and they did not have noise when they came to the site. And we are spiritual stones building a spiritual house, that temple, that tabernacle, that sanctuary. And we are not to build it according to our pattern, but by everything how we have been shown. I hope we are getting fear God, give him glory. And so we are told, um, now we can understand Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of, uh, of God. Uh, so the big three things, the temptations by which Christ was beset in the wilderness was appetite, love of the world, and presumption are three great leading allurements by which men are most frequently overcome. Councils on Health, page 287. Appetite, love of the world, and presumption. And when we were looking at uh, uh, the everlasting gospel, we saw that Christ came in uh, uh, in the sinful flesh, in our likeness, and overcame. And uh, there is no one who is to say that I cannot overcome. And so appetite should not be controlling us. We are told the original design of God. Uh, this is what we find again and again i have been shown that god is trying to lead us back step by step to his original design that man should subsist upon the natural products of the earth among those who are waiting for the coming of the lord meat eating will eventually be done away flesh will cease to form a part of their diet we should ever keep this end in view and endeavor to work steadily towards it so uh, the Lord wants this body, this temple to be built according to the pattern. And uh, he will like us. He is not urging us to do something so drastic that is against uh, 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 our well-being. What the Lord does is to bring us back 
to his own image. Sin has defiled us. Sin has separated us with God. But now, the people, they are being called with a loud voice. And so as we end, I want us to keep this in our mind. That uh, the Lord is saying, uh, uh, fear God and give him glory. Fear God and give him glory and worship him who made heaven and earth and the sea and the springs of water. Instead of uh, being lured away from God by the things that he has made, we should worship him, we should give him glory, we should give him honor, and all these things shall be added unto us. Sometimes the things of the world separates us from God. And the Lord says in the book of Matthew chapter 6, the people of the world actually runs for these things. The birds of the air do not plant or harvest. Solomon in his greatest uh, 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 dressing, he cannot match the lilies of the field. And so the things that make us uh, not give God glory, these things will be done away with. But the man who fears the Lord shall endure forever. And if we fear God, if we love him with all our hearts, the things that we yearn for, the things that we are pursuing, they'll be added unto us. And so, the mission of Jesus Christ on earth, we, we, we talk about being Christ-like. The mission of Jesus Christ on the earth was to glorify the Father. And so, if we are talking about being Christ-like, we are told that Christ has left an, an example. As, as we look at these few closing sentiments, uh, I want us to see uh, this, that uh, God, Christ himself has left us an example. Because we talk about being Christian. What does it mean to be a Christian? Uh, look at this. For even here unto are he called, because Christ also suffered. This is First Peter chapter two verses twenty one to twenty five. For he, for even here unto are he called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that he should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. This is the example. This is why we are called Christians because we are Christ like. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not but committed himself to him that judges righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you are hid. For ye were a sheep going astray, but are ye now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of all souls. The mission of Christ was to give glory to God. So our mission also is to glorify God through Christ. It is to accept. By accepting, by honoring the Son, we honor the Father. Look here. Uh, in John, in the book of John, uh, chapter 17, verse 4, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given to me to do. Whoever offers praise glorifies me, and to whom who orders his conduct aright, I'll show the salvation of God. What? I know ye, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not of your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And so, if we say that uh, we are Christian, we should always endeavor to glorify God. By glorifying God, we are transformed from glory to glory. By coming near to Him, we are changed from character to character. What does it mean to give glory to God? Giving glory to God. To give glory to God is to reveal his character in our own and thus 
make him known. To give glory to God is to reveal his character in our own and thus make him known. So in our daily living, in our own businesses, in our daily transaction, we exemplify the character of God. We do not follow after our inclinations, but we have the mind of Christ. And in whichever way we make known the Father or the Son, we glorify God. Amen. And so, the first angel calls us to give glory to God, to fear Him, to glorify Him, and to worship Him. And so, many times we have looked at this as a, a negative thing. But I want us to see that... Uh, the fear of the Lord is being perfected in the love of God, is receiving his salvation, it is praising him, it is living for him, it is having his angels encompass around us. And so uh, in, I, I'll just leave you with this as we close this session. But we all with unveiled face beholding us in the mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. And so I'll urge us to think about these things that um, we have uh, uh, learned uh, in fearing God. We find that uh, in the building of the temple, in the day of atonement, the Shekinah glory filled the temple after sacrifices had been accepted. And as we behold God, then we are changed from glory to glory. As we love him more, the more of his character is revealed in us and it is revealed by the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. And so to fear God is to accept that His Holy Spirit may work in our lives. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord continue guiding you. We live in a world which is filled with filthiness, with people having a love for themselves. They don't care about anything, but the Lord calls us to love Him. When we love Him, in the sense of fearing him, then his love is made perfect in us. God be with you and bless you. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you because there is no fear in perfect love. Fear only brings torment. And those who are tormented, will tell the rocks fall on us. They will seek for death. They cannot live with everlasting fires. But those who love you, those who have the fear of you and the protection of the angels and thy salvation and the spirit turning them from glory to glory and are perfecting their character, they have nothing to fear. But Lord, to continue growing in love, accepting to decrease as Christ increases in their life, Father, I thank you so much because you want to teach us and restore thy own image in us. And so we come as little children that you may do thy will in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.